Hello and welcome to Chinny Vision. The name's Chin. James Chin. Licensed to play old computer games. So it's 30 years since The Living Daylights was released. Back in the cinemas anyway, because famously the game came out late. It actually came out in September 1987 and not uh, the end of June when the movie came out. Now, I thought about reviewing a Bond game. I thought, well, we've got to get a top Bond expert on. But I've also got a top Bond expert and the funniest man on the internet. Uh, Twitter's own Mr. Ken Shabby, John Rain, joins us on Chinivision. Hello, John. Hello. And, uh, well, you've been tortured by The Living Daylights, I believe. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, obviously, I love the film. And uh, I was, yeah, I bought the game in, in anticipation and excitement. And, uh, yeah, it was... A horrific experience. Okay, well, we're going to relive it now here on Chini Vision. So, load mm-hmm. the game up, and I've just got this on the on the spectrum. And actually, I should mention first some of the game coverage because Aristotle Computer User had this brilliant cover for the Living Daylights of the Aston Martin smashing out of an Amstrad CPC monitor and a very, very suspiciously glowing review, almost as if they'd got the exclusive and perhaps they didn't <laughs> say nice things about the game. There was a lovely crash cover of it as well. Ollie Frey had done a really, really good picture of Timothy Dalton pointing his gun, and it said, The Living Daylights. Ah, we bring that up on the screen. This is a bit of a different Chini Vision. Everyone at home is watching this going, what is this? Well, it's a, it's a bit different. Anyway, we're going to start the game off because we're not actually playing it live this time. We've got the footage up instead. Yeah. So we're going to sync that up. So starting off on the Spectrum version, and you've got the... That's well, supposed to be Gibraltar because in the movie... Yeah. Timothy Dalton, we don't know it's Timothy Dalton as yet, uh, lands on Gibraltar with a load of other spies. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've got this, this pretty standard Spectrum menu screen. No Bond music. It's David Whittaker did the music. Oh. Not a trace of any musical cue from the film at all in any of the versions. That's always a disappointing thing. How it did is. you get this game, by the way? Did you get the Spectrum bundle? Because this came by Amstrad bundle with this in with the Plus 2 with a light gun. Uh, no, I didn't. I bought this just as a. Uh, I, I, I had the 128K and I bought this in a WH Smith in Chester. So full price, you got hit for the full whack. It wasn't even the freebie. No, I was on holiday. I was visiting uh, my uh, uncle in Chester with my mum and uh, she, as a, a whim, she bought it for me. So, level one Gibraltar and yep. no parachuting, no excitement, no bond is no, running from left to can't. right. And the first thing you notice is a horrific control system. It was horrible. You trip over the stones, you can't shoot the people. With a light gun, it makes sense, but with a keyboard, it doesn't make sense at all. But I imagine the light gun was an afterthought, because none of the other versions have the light gun, and I assume Amstrad got Domark just to retrofit the light gun stuff into this. Mm. Oh, it, it was so horrible to control, especially with a 10-year-old. It's a horrible to control playing it the other day, because yeah. you, you run along and you're trying to avoid all these baddies... Um, who are shooting paint guns at you, but of course there's one baddie who's trying to kill you who you have to kill at the end of the level. Yeah. So you're, I'm dead there and I've gone back to the beginning of the level again to do it again because the colour clash means you can't tell who the baddies are as opposed yeah. to the friendly foes of paint guns. It's, it's upsetting. It's, games like this, I mean, there are a hell of a lot of them at the time because obviously there was a big push for everyone to get the licensing for things, but the, the game would always be a letdown. It's uh, absolutely terrible, but um, MSX version is going to be the same as the Spectrum and indeed... It is. Um, it's just a little bit slower. Um, and one entertaining thing about it is it crashes a bit. So sometimes when you go back to start again, you lose life, you get all this corruption at the bottom of the screen, which is about the most entertaining thing I can say about level one on the MSX. Yeah. Do you think it's the rush job, this game? Oh, yeah. I mean, in fact, it was late as well. I think mm. they just hurried this through because we're going to see, well, just bear in mind the game mechanics of level one. Um, over to Amstrad CPC, um, mm-hmm. and it's actually get credit for Walking Circles, and uh, who developed this on the 8-bits. Uh, nice credits on there for Dan Jack SA, who must be something to do with Bond, considering it's 1962, yep. and of course, Eon. Yep, Dan Jack is the first name of both Harry Saltzman and Albert Broccoli. Ah. It's a combination of their names. So here we are again, same lack it looks of... looks ex- a bit better. It does. Same lack of excitement, though. I mean, this is one of the best sequences of the movie because they're all parachuting <laughs> onto Gibraltar. There's the things you could do with level one. There's the yeah. parachuting. There's the jeep chase. There's not paintballing with Bond. 
Oh, what was this here? This is the C64 version. It's a bit smoother. Oh, nice. It's much better. Um, but it's still um, Bond runs long in slow motion. Um, yeah. Controls look smoother, but they aren't any better to use. Although you can see the difference with the baddies. Yeah, that helps. But this could be a Jeep. You could be holding onto the Jeep, charging down Gibraltar. Anything. Yeah. And we're just doing something that... They've just taken the locations from the film and used it in this game. Um, oh, this is good. You'll like this. Living Daylights on the BBC Micro. And that fantastic <laughs> loading screen. She looks a bit worried. Have they painted her eyes in afterwards because the digitised didn't capture them properly? Absolutely, yes. I think 100%. they have because she doesn't yeah. look like that in the movie. No. B- Bond I can and- tell you what, that, that's the bit where he burns the, uh, he lasers the car next to him and she gives him that look. But yeah, they've given her cartoon eyes for some reason. This is the BBC micro version, so it's uh, garish. <laughs> Yeah, blimey. How many how many epileptics do you think suffered with these games? We, we, did we have epileptics in the 80s? I'm not sure. I mean, they existed, but... Um, it's, it's kind Tango. Of, Tango invented them, wasn't it? No, nobody kind of um, was aware about these things. They just, oh, we just have loading screens that flash and all this stuff. It's... Um, God, just, imagine a Spectrum loading game now. You'd never get away with that. No. And he, he hops along on here and he shoot along and it, it, he's, it's a bit easier on the BBC. It looks uh, like Nick Nack. It does. <laughs> uh, this is the What's Atari 8 bit version. Oh. I did, wasn't expecting an Atari 8 bit conversion, no. but apparently there is one. Um, it looks oh quite my nice. goodness. But it yeah. looks a bit like um, almost like a kind of a, it's like Lewis Collins or someone to be doing, kind of doing a, what's that movie, Who Dares Wins? Yeah. Like workout uh, thing. <laughs> It reminds me a bit of the Friday the 13th game here. Oh, yeah. That's particularly terrible. Yeah. Oh. Didn't Domark do games like Saboteur and things like that? No, that was... Uh, uh, Saboteur was Darrell. Darrell, that's who, it. Uh, he, went to, he got out of games pretty quickly and started doing accounting software instead, I think. So yeah, good move. They were, I think they're still around. I think they still actually exist doing business software. God, I used to love Saboteur and Saboteur 2. They were great games. They, they are fantastic. Um, this is. Oh, this looks nothing like Gibraltar. It looks like some kind <laughs> of... Bonds are all about locations. Fantastic yeah. locations, and this ain't a fantastic location. Not really selling it, no. Knick-knack running around Green and Common. <laughs> and the, you can see that that's the, down the bottom selecting the, the weapon, because you get two weapons in each level. Um, oh, yeah. And you can't shoot the enemies there... With the gun, you can shoot with the paint gun. Apart from the baddie, you can't shoot with the paint gun, oh. but you can shoot with the gun. It's what annoying. Yeah. It's a theme repeated throughout the game. So this is what you get between levels. You have to select a weapon for the next level. You have to guess yeah. what you need, which is just really annoying. It's Q's lab, apparently. I think I only ever got to the next level. I think that's as far as I got before I either gave up or just, like, reached my limit of skill. So this is... Uh, we are... Taking Koskov away from his KGB guards without injuring any of the music lovers enjoying the show inside. Um, obviously one of the more famous. <laughs> Again, odd choice of level because you could have had Carla, uh, you could have had a sniper level trying to stop yep. Carla from shooting. But uh, and over on the oh micro, this is um, very garish indeed. It's horrible. It's um, The colours are reversed and this, is the, this isn't corrupt. This is actually what it's like. Goodness me. There's a helicopter there just gone past. Yeah, oh, where does that come very from? Flickery. This infamous scene in the film where he's running down the street with a sumo wrestler. <laughs> this, this is the yeah, Spectrum again, isn't it? So you'd have seen this version. You just keep on yeah. running, basically. Yeah, this is as far as I got, I think. I think I either gave up or thought, well, that's as far as I can do because I'm stupid, but goodness me. The Amstrad version at least it looks quite nice with the colour scheme, but um, nothing much apart from that. No. No, they've made an effort with the Amstrad. Not Amstrad, sorry. Um, yeah, it is Amstrad. That was the other one. They're over the C64. And again... Infrared, it said. Oh, yes. I've correctly selected the infrared so I can see who the music Ooh. levels are and who the um, baddies are. Cause you kn- Clever. But again, you have to know which of those items to select on that intermediate screen because if you get it wrong, you could, there's no going back. Um, World of pain. Yeah, so you just uh, run along and... I like the animation on the C64. It is 50 hertz. It, it looks fairly decent. It's the nicest looking. But again, it's you know, such, all those great sequences in this movie, they just don't... You know, it's... Well, they've fallen into the trap a lot of games around that time did, where they, they found a basic formula and then repeated it level after level after level. 
It's using Thinking the same about- code. I mean, it's the same code over and over and over again, as we're seeing. Mm. Um, you know, kids pay a lot of money for games in those days, so it's a bit of a... I don't know, I was dis- desperately disappointed because I loved the film and this was all I had. So again, this is Q's lab. Q is not around yeah. with the sausages for fingers. And, no. but this Imagine trying something. to animate that. <laughs> you'd, have to have, you could, you'd have to pay extra to have um, Timothy Dalton and everyone else in it. So oh, this is go. the this... pipeline level, which is, of course, oh. again, from the movie, okay, you can't necessarily do what they did in the movie to distract the guards. Um, no. But... So you could have, like, a bonus level where you have, you have to, like, make sure that the level doesn't go above a, above a certain point or something by b- button pushing. Yeah. Like Decathlon t- style but this is just dull. It's dull, and it just kind of... It's the same one, all the versions. Just... God. And they chuck things down at you, and again, it's... I mean, we're not even kind of, well, where are we? But not even quarter of the way through the movie. We're on level three. No. And it's, you imagine them sitting there just making notes, watching the previews they would have done. Going, yeah, mm-hmm. that sequence, yeah, that sequence. Yeah, oh, we can reuse the code there. Mm-hmm. Well, so they've done that for every level in this, haven't they? Yeah, it's pretty much. Um, you have to keep on shooting, and it's just so, you get plenty of lives. Although I am playing on the Amstrad version with a cheat here, because the game is pretty hard on most of the versions. Domark had their bond rights for ages, didn't they? Because they did the living, the license to kill game as well. And they had the view to a kill, which apparently I mean, yeah. view to kill was absolutely terrible and people say yeah. this is much better than it. I suppose it is. But... It is, it is, yeah. My brother had the view to a kill game and it was just impossible to play. My mate had it on the same compilation as Friday the 13th, which was uh, ah. pretty insulting. <laughs> that is a kick to the teeth. So we're onto the mansion, and again, you can have a nice fried sequence, um, as you saw in the you movie, in, in the kitchen. Yeah, they're pretty much, and mm. it's just, um, and we wait. But for didn't Domark do the live and let die game as well? Uh, oh, was that Domark or was it Elite? Because there was a bit of a... It was a Spy Hunter clone, wasn't it, basically? Yeah, I think Elite did one as well. Uh. Um Again, it's choosing, I'm choosing the bazooka, and I only know that one because I read the tips. Ah. Here's the milkman with his milk. Um, and he keeps on coming back, because there's only one of him in the movie. But yeah. um, he keeps on uh, coming back to get you. So you run along a bit. There's another milkman. I mean, what are you supposed to do? I mean, what are you supposed to do to avoid him throwing a milk bottle? Uh, jump, like or, jump or r- uh, roll, I think. I haven't seen the... The oh. controls are terribly bad as well. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, Amst- and the Amstrad version for the mansion. And again, there's your Unigate Milkman. Better animation, though, for the Amstrad version, isn't there? It looks nice. Um, well, it's a bit orange. I mean, it, the colours could be chosen a bit better. So this is all new. I'd never seen any of this. I don't think many people had seen it, but it's... I do like the way the, the helicopter comes out and bombs everyone, just as it doesn't in the movie. I do love Spectrum games when they had the, you know, like the red and black and yellow and black. Here we go, fairground. Here we go, octopusy kind of level. In, again, it doesn't happen in the movie. They no. you have to use the crossbow because your, your water PPK won't shoot the balloons. And again, in the end, you can't shoot the man with the crossbow. You have to change it to the gun. Of course, you know, shooting, arrows don't kill. Yeah, shooting someone multiple times in the head with a crossbow, you know, doesn't um, do anything. <laughs> And this is the point of the movie as well. You could have the Aston Martin sequence with shooting the lorries and the laser cutting and all that stuff. All yeah. The, you know, the best part. And you, you're here just kind of shooting balloons. You could have had the little cello chase down the hill. Yeah, you could have the ski kind of skiing on the cello down the hill, yeah. the Aston Martin, all that stuff. The programmer sitting there, cross arm, going, nah, not going to do that. It's just, it's just rushed. Like you, like you say, they've probably written one code and thought, well, we'll just use that for every level. And then, thank you very much, here's, I will have the check, please. That's pretty um, much it. And it, it's a shame, because it could be... I, don't, I suppose because the magazines were so delayed in those days, kids would just mm. bought this game and seen the review eight weeks later. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's pretty much what happened to me. In fact, I remember the crash feature on it basically being um, half the film, half the game. Yeah. So it probably wasn't even finished when they reviewed it, I imagine. Ex- exactly. You yes. produced a podcast called Smirsh Pod. Which is all about yeah. James Bond. Yeah. And uh, it's so funny, it's caused me to nearly fall off my bike when cycling, listen to it a couple of times. Just tell us a little bit Cracky. about it. Um, well, the intention was that I thought there's not a lot of 
things out there about Bond for people who like Bond. It's all very kind of straight laced and that sort of thing. And even when you do get a Bond podcast, they're usually just talking about it quite reverently. Whereas I, I, I don't know about you, but quite often when I'm watching a Bond film, I just think that is ridiculous, that is stupid, or that is great, or that is funny, you know. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to take the uh, you know the, the ram album club model and just get a bond film each episode and get a different guest on every time to just have a chat about it and um yeah it's, it's it's been lots and lots of fun i've had some great people on like al murray and samir ramid from front row and it's just you know there's more excellent people to come and we're also doing side specials so we're doing films that aren't bond films but are related for instance um bullseye flash gordon etc you know people things that have got bond actors in them holiday on the buses uh that is it confidential i can't talk about it <laughs> that that would be something i think everybody would want to hear but it really is <laughs> I, I highly recommend smirch pod because it's it, there's so much dirge out there in podcast land it's so difficult to know what to listen to and smirch yes it, it is over 18s um but it Definitely. Is, it's for grown-ups it's for grown-ups but if you like yeah. the idea of robin asquith in a shed and a queue having sausages for fingers um mm. it's a podcast that you really should listen to so this is tangiers and you're running across the, yeah, you do run across the rooftop in tangiers admittedly mm. unfortunately we're not going to be picked up by miss sissy from you rang my lord um in the car. so <laughs> and also I, I noticed this when watching the movie just to refresh myself uh felix uh does have um philip's monitors in the boat which of course yes. Commodore monitors as well so I do like this in the C64 though on Tangier. It's got this nice pseudo 3, 3D look to it, and the graphics have taken a, a jump up and they've done a proper mm. job on it. So it's got this kind of almost like ant attack, but in yeah. colour, depth. Or well, they can't go up and down, you can go left and right. Yeah, ant attack is more sophisticated than the Living Daylights. Oh, ant attack's a fantastic game. It's, um, Didn't that come out about 1983? Uh, 82, 83, yeah, this there is 87, go. so... So there you go. Why do you see... The thing is, most film conversions at this time are still pretty rubbish, because even Ocean hadn't quite got to grips with the licences. They were buying licences like Night Rider and just chucking out any old crap. And yeah. then it was only about 88, they suddenly went, right, we've got to get the quality right here, because we've got to sell a lot of games. But even then, they just did the same kind of platform game. I remember Batman and the Untouchables being nearly identical. Oh, yeah. Um, although you do get the driving sequences, of course, and the shooting sequences yeah. in the Untouchables, so there's mm. a little bit of variation. Whereas he yeah. just got the one type of level. Total Recall as well, that had lots yeah. of running around, but it had uh, vehicle sequences like Batman in between. Yeah, it did. So it yeah. breaks it up. And you get those little kind of um, Robocop with the... Yeah, it's all walking along, but every second level is that kind photo of... Photo fit. Yeah, photo fit or shooting or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, this wouldn't be so bad if you had a kind of yeah okay every second level is running along shooting people fine uh, now we're in Afghanistan as in the movie and again all the most interesting sequences have been missed out <laughs> it's just amazing amazing that they're still just using the same thing at this stage but these are like a change of colours on the Amstrad so everyone's now green yeah. uh, but you would be quite annoyed if you had had the perseverance to stay with it to this point you'd be like oh, this is just not going to change is it that's it, we are on level seven of eight. Yeah, and I bet you, when you completed it, it just says something like, well done. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, bet you. Let's, not get, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a video of you completing it? Uh, well, we're going to see, we're going to get... Oh, forward. we're going to find out. We're going to find exciting. out. How I've used, I've used cheats, that's why we dropped the BBC Micro and Excel versions long ago, because there's no cheats uh, available for them, so uh, we can get so far on them. <laughs> According to the manual, trapped in the Afghanistan desert in the middle of a Russian airbase, no problem for W07. Watch out as the enemy release all their forces against you, which is basically one bloke every five seconds. Um, no tanks or anything, no... You know, it's just a side-scrolling dull level, really, on all the versions. You could be hanging from the plane with the bombs, dropping bombs, um, tanks stealing kind of things, and all that stuff that went on in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Um on the side, because we were on the side of the Mujahideen back then, mm. as per Rambo Three. So, yeah. uh, and of course they're run by Art Malik. Uh, mm -hmm. Cameron Shaw. Yes. I genuinely, though, genuinely, this is like one of the biggest disappointments of my childhood. This game. 
It is. It's one of those. If you love the Bond films, and you bought this, mm. you're gonna be so disappointed. And this is the end oh. level. So you, there's Whitaker, mm. and he's just throwing things at you. And I'm, I've got infinite lives. For God's sake! I've shot him. <laughs> is anything else gonna happen? Having a look round, checking if anything else is gonna happen. No. Nope. it. Unbelievable. Yeah, there you go. You have killed Whitaker. The Prime Minister thanks you. Oh my God. That's it. That is the How living daylight. How insulting is that? It's just, he talks about, what does it say for the level uh, eight? You finally meet the mastermind behind the dastardly plot, Brad Whitaker, the American arms dealer and military historian. Although we have, you meet him earlier in the film, don't you, actually? Um, he mm. unleashes all the power of his arsenal against you, but you must fight on to reach him. So all the powers of his arsenal are basically him throwing sticks at you. <laughs> basically. <laughs> Well, that is quite genuinely true to the film. That's essentially what he does. But, oh my God, I can't believe that. I mean, that is an endurance test to go through all those levels which are identical and at the end just have the nerve to go, well done. It is. I mean, if we if we, if we sum up, it's kind of, look at those versions. Well, the Amstrad Spectrum and Commodore versions, I mean, the Commodore version at least has better animation. The gameplay across all the versions mm. is absolutely diabolical i guess bbc mm. micro owners would have been happy to have a copy of a big game on their system if they um, were still alive <laughs> still alive they hadn't had a colours. fit and died <laughs> and also uh, i do like the graphics on the atari somebody's done a good job on those graphics on the atari yeah. xlxc yeah, version it's, it's nice to look at it's nice to look at but the gameplay there's no nobody at any stage it's been someone's designed the game and everyone's gone out and implemented it but the problem is the design is absolutely rubbish. It just goes back to what I said earlier. I mean, you, like, as you agree, agreed as well, it just feels like a total rush job. Last minute thing. Domark have paid a lot of money for the licence. They've rushed it out. They've not allowed enough money uh, or time to do it. The fact it was late indicates it was probably even in a worse state before, mm. you know, because you'd, you'd want it out in when the... I know, I know some was the worst time for software, but you'd want it out when the movie came out. You got all that free publicity. Yeah. Um, there was one thing I noticed there, just reading from Amstrad Computer User in a nut at this time, just in another article, the columnist Jeremy Clarkson. Yes, that one. Oh my um, God. Actually mentions because he, he did a couple of articles for ACU. Uh, actually mentions that he went to see The Living Daylights four times. Wow. So really? he must have liked it. Wow. Yeah, it's got the Aston Martin in it, hasn't it? And someone nearly dies in a car crash, so he likes that sort of thing. Pity, pity I didn't give him the game to review. They gave him Barbarian to review instead, but he did talk about no. Living Day. That's when he was loading it up. So, um, thank you, Mr. Ken Shabby, John Rain, mm, for joining no us problem. with a very different chinny vision, if anyone's still listening, because they might not like change. But this is just <laughs> one of those things where I thought I'd give it a go. That was Living Daylights, a game to avoid. I think yes. you'll agree. Yes, and uh, I'll see you in 2019 for the License to Kill game, which also confounded me. (laughs) 